Hi, I'm Philip, and in this RDM Byte, I'll be explaining why you might want to make code available in a repository, as well as signposting you towards resources that will show you how to get started with this. Code availability and versioning is key to data providence, which is why I'm making this RDM Byte. To get the most out of this video, you need to have written some analysis code and have a working internet connection. You might also want to check out our RDM Bytes on organizing analysis workflows and notebooks, but you can watch these videos in any order. This video has four key learning objectives. Once we've finished, we want you to understand what a repository is, as well as how the concept relates to data management. We also hope that you'll know why repositories are so popular within the open data community and how to get started with a repository creation. Perhaps unsurprisingly, I believe open science and code are good for their own sake. But if you need a little more convincing, I've put together some bullet points suggesting how open code and data might elevate your research. Firstly, you get better reviews and feedback from colleagues when they can see how you've obtained your results. Once your work is published, others will be more willing to trust your research if they themselves can access the data and code used to draw conclusions. Working in an open manner helps teach you new skills, and those can bring you onto future projects that might otherwise be unavailable to you. Alongside this, good coding practices will save you time in the long term. This is also true of keeping your data available and clean. Finally, and slightly cynically, open code and data tend to increase citation numbers. Opening up your code and data to public scrutiny can be scary, and there are certain risks you might want to consider. The most pressing is that by putting your resources online, you may make something public that shouldn't be public. A severe case might involve leaking passwords or personal information onto the internet. I once found my email address and exam results in a public repo after a mistake by a university data scientist. A careful read through of your code and data metadata before publication can be extremely valuable here. Another risk involves leaking intellectual property. To mitigate this, many researchers choose to release their code at the point of ma manuscript is published. Most hosting platforms allow for embargoes or private public distinctions, so this is usually fairly simple to achieve. A repo, short for repository, is an agreed upon term for a collection of files that are providing some coding functionality. There isn't anything particularly special about them. Any folder on your computer could become a repo if you chose. However, to make them easy to understand, people tend to stick to some common structures. You can find out more about this in our RDM Byte on Analysis Organization. If you've got some analysis code, one file or many, you've got a repo. There are a lot of places that will host a repo for you, and I've listed three of them on this slide. GitHub and GitLab are software development platforms, whereas Zenodo and Figshare are focused on hosting explicitly. I've provided links to all of these resources in the description of this video. Remember, hosting is only half the process. You need people to know where to find your code. The easiest way to, is to provide links or references to the code and data in published research papers. Thanks for watching this RDM Byte. You can find more information, tips, and tricks at the links in the description.